Thank you. Uh, it is a great honor to invite me to talk in this uh, web conference. I am Akito Nakagawa, uh, a general cardiologist from Amagasaki to a hospital, a private hospital nearby Osaka in Japan. Today, I talk about the prognostic importance of right ventricular to pulmonary circulation among each pair of patients from our multicenter registry. These contents have just published in the circulation cardiovascular imaging last month. If you have any interest in this presentation, I wish you could find and see the details in this article. I have no financial conflicts of interest about this issue. Let us start from the background about HFPF. Uh, unfortunately, established therapeutic strategies for HFPF patients, such as AC inhibitor, ALV, B level curve, or uh, nephrolysis inhibitor, uh, failed to achieve effective results for HFPF patients. As you know, none of effective therapeutic strategies have been established for HFPF patients so far. Along all over heart failure patients, right ventricular function has been paid attention. Recently, uh, not just right ventricular function, but RV to pulmonary artery uncoupling uh, has been focused even among HFPF patients. Uh, this is a uh, positional statement about RV function among HFPF from Heart Failure Association of the European Society of Cardiology. In this statement, RV to pulmonary artery coupling reflects with TAPSI, uh, tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion, over pulmonary artery systolic pressure, which is defined with uh, the inferior vena cava uh, collapsibility and uh, tricuspid valve dilatation pressure gradient on echocardiography was associated with the worst prognosis, both in HFRF patients and HFPF patients, and a proxenic cutoff value of this ratio was identified as uh, smaller than uh, 0.3 fix. Uh, it is speculated about the pathophysiology of RV dysfunction among HFPF patients was caused both uh, pulmonary hypertension uh, derived from left-sided heart failure and the systemic reasons uh, such as arterial fibrillation, diabetes, uh, inflammation, and so on. HFPF is characterized with its uh, heterogenetic and complicated pathophysiology. To achieve establishing better outcomes, we should stratify uh, with heterogenetic HFPF patients from some points of view and should find phenotypic specific therapeutic strategies. So the aim of this study was uh, that using the multicenter prospective of the veterinary cohort study, we investigated the prognostic importance of right ventricular to pulmonary circulation coupling parameter, that is TAPC over PSC systolic pressure among Japanese hospitalized HFPF patients. Let us move to the introduction of our registry. Pursuit HFPF registry was organized by the professor Yasushi Sakata from Osaka University. 17 uh, public hospitals, uh, 14 private hospitals, and, and one university hospital participated in this registry. The enrollment started from June uh, 2016, uh, and the registration is just ongoing to the goal of 1,500 cases. All the patients were hospitalized cases and due to decompensated heart failure diagnosed with uh, the flaming heart failure criteria. Inclusion criteria was uh, left ventricular ejection fraction greater than uh, 50% on admission and uh, brain natriuretic peptide greater than 100 picogram per milliliter or uh, N terminal pro brain natriuretic peptide. Uh, greater than 400 picogram per milliliter on admission. Exclusion criteria is below uh, severe uh, barbara hardware disease or uh, under 20 years old or acute coronary syndrome on admission or 
uh, those who had uh, poor life expectancy within six months due to non-cardiac diseases, such as a cancer or something, and those who had previous heart transplantation, those were excluded. Uh, this is the follow-up schedule of our registry. Patient data during hospitalization were collected on admission and discharge. On admission was defined as the period between 48 hours after admission. And at discharge was defined as the period 48 hours after admission and 30 days after discharge. On each point, uh, physical data, blood tests, echocardiography, uh, or uh, so on were collected. After discharge, uh, prognostic information was scheduled to collect every year until five years later of the discharge. This is the objectives in the current study. 871 patients were enrolled during the observational period, and we excluded 16 patients who died during hospital stay. So all the analyzed patients were those who discharged alive. In those 855 patients, uh, discharged alive patients, we could find uh, 655 free patients whose topsy over basic pressure were recorded at discharge. Unfortunately, we should have excluded 200 patients whose topsy or PSC pressure were recorded, uh, were missed uh, in the, during the stay, or hospital stay. The primary entry point was defined as uh, all cause death or heart failure readmission or cerebral vascular disease events. The mean follow up period of, was about one year. Let's move to the patient background. Uh, these tables show the patient characteristics of the whole cohort. The median age was 83, 83 years. Old patients were common. Uh, female was uh, six, uh, 56%. The median BMI was 21.2. Uh, maybe it seems smaller uh, than other countries. Hypertension history uh, was seen as many as 85% 80, uh, followed by the dyslipidemia and the chronic kidney disease. Atrial fibrillation uh, was seen as many as 40% at discharge uh, and the median NT pro BNP concentration at discharge was 1,080 picogram per milliliter. The median topsy, PSH pressure, and the ratio was highlighted here. It should be noted that the median of topsy over PSH pressure ratio was as high as 0.54. As mentioned in the background, the previously uh, stated prognostic threshold of topsy over PSH pressure was as low as 0 0.36 uh, in the positional statement. But the distribution of topsy over PSC pressure in our cohort uh, was generally higher, uh, and 0 0.36 was too short, uh, that uh, was less than the 25% uh, of quantile. So we tried to find the ideal prognostic cutoff value of topsy over PSC pressure in this cohort using the receiver operating curve analysis. The primary endpoint consisted of 81 all cause death, uh, 146 heart failure readmission, and as small as 15 cerebrovascular events. ROC curve analysis showed that the ideal cutoff uh, for predicting the primary endpoint was 0 0.481 uh, with the AUC of 0 0.59. Then we assigned the patients to two groups uh, with the top C over PSC pressure threshold of 0 0.48. This is the characteristics of patients divided with the ideal threshold of top C over PSC pressure. Left side column uh, is under the threshold, so RBPA uncoupling group. And the right side uh, is over the threshold, so RBPA coupling preserved group. The lower group showed higher age, a female prevalent, 
uh, lower systolic blood pressure admission and uh, higher pacemaker implantation. Uh, the, uh, uh, regarding the patient profile at discharge, uh, lower group showed uh, frequency, uh, high frequency of atrial fibrillation as high as uh, 55% and uh, renal dysfunction and higher NT pro BNP. About echocardiographic findings, the lower uh, group showed smaller left ventricular size despite a larger uh, left atrium and a uh, larger right ventricular size. Uh, this is the main, main result about prognostic importance of TAPSI over fiasis pressure. Kappa bio analysis showed that the lower TAPSI uh, over fiasis pressure, the red line, uh, was significantly associated with the adverse outcomes of primary endpoint of composite endpoint and each secondary endpoint of all cause death and heart failure re readmission. Cox regression models are shown in this table. Uh, univariable analysis is shown in the left side and the multivariable analysis is in the right side. Uh, in the published article, uh, just upper column, uh, which were analyzed uh, as categorical variables uh, divided with the median values as opened. I show extended results of the analysis regarding continuous variables as original values. In both methods, uh, TAPSI over PSC pressure at discharge was found uh, to be a significant prognostic marker uh, for HF patients, independently from uh, age, uh, gender, uh, coupling of atrial fibrillation, uh, renal dysfunction, uh, EO by prime, and NT pro BNP. In the multivariable analysis with continuous variables, age, uh, NT pro BNP, and the top C of a PSC ratio were found to be significantly associated with the outcomes. We are moving to the discussion. Uh, just mentioned repeatedly, the ideal cutoff of top C of a PSC ratio uh, 0.48 was different, higher from that of previously proposed value of 0.36. We wonder uh, whether this prognostic threshold is reasonable for HFPF in patients. Uh, remembering the previous reports, uh, the this threshold of 0.36 was proposed mainly from those who had caught right heart catheterization for suspected pulmonary hypertension. Those candidates were possible to be something different from those HFPF patients we encounter in the clinical settings, I think. Major previous literatures, including our article, uh, which assessed the top silver PSC ratio ratio for HF patients are listed in this table. Some studies uh, include HF ref patients and outpatient target studies were the major. It should be noted that the clinical endpoints uh, were not the same, particularly with and with or without uh, heart failure readmission. The main result figure of the article of Gauter uh, was shown in the previous slide. This study also based on the outpatient evaluated with the endpoint of only all cause death and the median uh, mean TAPSI of a PSC ratio value was as low as 0.4. But it should be also noted that our study was based on quite higher, older population than previous reports. We focused in these three articles in the green box. Uh, Guazi from Italy showed the significant poor prognosis in the patients with under the lower title of top silver PS pressure, smaller than the value of 0 0.35. But the patients with middle total uh, seem to be uh, have also poorer prognosis than the upper tartile. In the blue box, uh, interestingly, Bosch uh, from Singapore showed quite similar results to ours. Unfortunately, uh, we can't find why they divided patients uh, with the threshold 0.48, the same of ours uh, in their cohort, 
but the results were consistent with ours, despite uh, the differences of patient's age was still remaining. Regarding our cohort in the red box, of course, the threshold of 0 0.36 was also enough predictive for adverse outcomes. Atrial fibrillation was usual comorbid of HFPF patients. Our cohort also included as many as 40% patients with atrial fibrillation. Regarding RBPA uncoupling group, the frequency raised up to uh, 55% and the occupation was uh, significantly different from preserved RBPA coupling group. It was an expected result that univariable uh, Cox regression model showed that comorbid atrial fibrillation uh, was not affected with the outcomes because uh, other studies had shown atrial fibrillation was one of the important prognostic factors for HFPF patients. We can't understand why uh, atrial fibrillation itself was not responsible for the outcomes in our cohort, but we found that the cutoff value of TAPSI over uh, PSS pressure 0 0.48 could predict the adverse outcomes regardless of the comorbid of atrial fibrillation. Recently, uh, prognostic importance of right ventricular dysfunction of, of HFPF patients have been reviewed in a meta-analysis. In this review, uh, the right ventricular contractile parameters of TAPC and the fraction area change and uh, the uh, median, uh, mean and the systolic primary artery systolic pressure uh, were shown to be uh, significantly associated with the outcomes for HFPF patients. This review also suggested the hemodynamic and the systemic uh, influences on the right heart function. Beyond these concepts, the mutual relationship between right ventricular systolic function and the pulmonary circulation capacitance resulted in the uh, right ventricular to pulmonary artery coupling should be also worth focused. HFPF uh, is usually described as a disease comprised of systemic disorders, despite uh, HFREF as comprised mainly of cardiac disorders. It may be true, uh, but I think the importance and meaning of impaired light heart function for HFPF should be different from those for HFREF. So I think uh, we should refocus on the right side of HFPF and seek the possibilities for improving those poor prognostic patients. On the way, we should stand to think about the imp importance of establishing the phenotype-specific strategies for HFPF patients. I should state some limitations of this study. First, we unfortunately excluded as many as uh, 200 patients due to the missing of a topsy over PSC pressure ratio. Uh, there must be a selection bias in this analysis. For this reason, uh, we performed statistical multiple imputation strategy to support the result. Uh, the details are written in the supplement in our article. Uh, second and third, uh, we assessed the right ventricular function uh, and the hemodynamic parameters only with echocardiography measurements. The gold standard ass assessment for right ventricular function should improve, involve cardiac MR imaging and hemodynamic ass assessment uh, also should uh, involve uh, the calculation with the swan gun's catheter. These precise and detailed estimations were lacking in this research. Fourth, uh, because the enrollment of this registry is just ongoing, uh, the current prognostic event data are limited. This is the conclusion. Uh, we should hear uh, top C over PSC pressure discharge should be one of the prognostic predictors for adverse outcomes among Japanese HFPF patients, independently from age, gender, coexisting atrial fibrillation, renal dysfunction, EOI prime and NT-PROP-NP. 
uh, it was a great pleasure for me to find editorial comment on our article from Professor Marco Guazzi from Italy. He claimed in the editorial as the implications of tapestry of a piece of pressure ratio are clearly expanding and the assessment of light ventricle to uh, pulmonary circulation coupling comes to the front line even in acute setting of HFPF. These findings stimulate the future research for interventions that benefit the right ventricle to pulmonary circulation coupling process. I also agree with the comment and try to search for effective therapeutic strategies with considering the right side of HFPF patients Finally, uh, I deeply thank all the collaborators in the Pursuit HFPF registry. We are now still enrolling HFPF patients in this registry, and I hope we can report more and more findings in the future. Uh, thanks again for your attention and inviting me to this conference. Uh, this is all today. Uh, thanks a lot with your attention to my presentation. Thank you.